We're here outside of Our Lady of Perpetual Help Church in Boston. Shortly, the funeral services for Senator Edward Kennedy will take place. The President of the United States, Barack Obama, will deliver the eulogy. Former presidents will be attending. The Secret Service is cordoned off the area and are screening everybody as they sort of make their way in. It's a big day. Around 10 a.m., Kennedy family members started arriving at the Basilica, including Patrick Kennedy, Ted Kennedy's son, and Joan Kennedy, his former wife. On the right is Jean Kennedy Smith, the last surviving sibling of Ted Kennedy. Here we have Caroline Kennedy, the daughter of John F. Kennedy. Massachusetts' other senator, John Kerry, and Senator Christopher Dodd from Connecticut. Senator John McCain, former presidential candidate, was on hand to pay his respects. I think we all discovered the profound way in which this giant, this colossus, touched us in a very human way. Historians will judge his, his record, which I believe to be unequal and unparalleled in this country. But what set him apart from others uh, was his humanity and his love and his compassion. And it was always with Ted Kennedy about you, not about him. Inside the spacious basilica, luminaries such as former President Bill Clinton and current Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, former President Jimmy Carter and his wife Rosalind, On the left, we have former President Bush and his wife, Laura, and the current president right there, Barack Obama and First Lady Michelle Obama. At the end of his life, my dad returned home. He died at the place he loved more than any other, Cape Cod. The last months of my dad's life were not sad or terrifying, but full, full, filled with profound experiences, a series of moments more precious than I could have ima imagined. He taught me more about humility, vulnerability, and courage than he had taught me in my whole life. Although he lived a full and complete life by any measure, the fact is he wasn't done. He still had work to do. He was so proud of where we had recently come as a nation. And I, although I do grieve for what might have been, for what he might have helped us accomplish, I pray today that we can set aside this sadness and instead celebrate all that he was and did and stood for. Indeed, Ted was the happy warrior that the poet Wordsworth spoke of when he wrote, as tempted more, more able to endure, as more exposed to suffering and distress, thence also more alive to tenderness. Through his own suffering, Ted Kennedy became more alive to the plight and the suffering of others. The sick child who could not see a doctor, the young soldier denied her rights because of what she looks like or who she loves or where she comes from, the landmark laws that he championed, the Civil Rights Act, the Americans with Disabilities Act, immigration reform, children's health, insurance, the Family and Medical Leave Act, all have a running thread. Ted Kennedy's life work was not to champion the causes of those with wealth or power, 
or special connections. It was to give a voice to those who were not heard, to add a rung to the ladder of opportunity, to make real the dream of our founding. He was given the gift of time that his brothers were not, and he used that gift to touch as many lives and right as many wrongs as the years would allow.